Hey, y'all. So, of course, I had went to the doctor, and the doctor said, oh, your vitamin D3 is low. So, she prescribed me a multivitamin, vitamin D3, and a fish oil. And so, I started taking the medicine, and then I started feeling really bad. Mind you, nothing was wrong with me. I felt healthy. I was okay. And th as soon as I started taking this medicine, I started feeling bad. So, I was at school one day a few years ago. And I heard this guy saying, yeah, when I don't take my vitamin D3, I can feel it. I start feeling bad. And I'm like, hmm, those are the same symptoms I'm having. And I was like, when he stopped talking, I went over there and started talking to him. So that same thing happened to me. And so my skin was also itchy as well as not feeling bad. So I went to the doctor and she was like, well, your skin. She was like, well, go to the dermatologist. And so the dermatologist said, um... Well, we we have bacteria living on our skin, so that's normal. And I was like, but I've been, uh, never felt anything like it's just crawling on my skin, like I'm itching and it's nothing there. And she was like, okay, tell you what, stop taking all the medicine. We'll see exactly what it is. I stopped taking all the medicine, and all of a sudden, I felt better, which tells me whatever she was prescribing me was not good for me and I haven't taken any vitamins which is supposed to be good for you since then and I was like if I feel sick or whatever I'm going to look up what fruit or vegetable has the most vitamin D or uh most vitamins and then I'll, I'll eat that so listen to what AI says about vitamin D three have you ever felt sick after taking vitamin D3 supplements? You're not alone. Surprisingly, this common vitamin can sometimes cause discomfort or even symptoms resembling illness. But why is this the case? The answer lies in the way our bodies process vitamin D3. When taken in excess, vitamin D3 can lead to a condition known as hypervitaminosis D or vitamin D toxicity. This condition occurs when high levels of the vitamin build up in the blood, leading to nausea, vomiting, weakness, and frequent urination. Another reason could be an allergic reaction. Yes, some people are actually allergic to the substances used in the coating or additives of the supplement. So why aren't they testing us individually for what our bodies can accept, like an allergy test or something, instead of prescribing this stuff in mass doses to the masses, knowing that our bodies is going to reject it? This can lead to an array of symptoms such as rash, itching, swelling, severe dizziness and trouble breathing. Sometimes the body might just be adjusting to the new supplement. When introduced to a new supplement, the body can sometimes react negatively at first, but will eventually adjust over time. Moreover, the quality of the vitamin D3 supplement can also play a role. Some supplements may contain impurities or other ingredients that can cause adverse reactions. Therefore, it's always crucial to choose high quality supplements from reliable sources. So we all got our medicine from the pharmacy. So why is AI saying reliable sources? The pharmacy isn't a reliable source? To summarize, there are several reasons why vitamin D3 might make someone feel sick. These include vitamin D toxicity from excessive intake, allergic reactions to the supplement's coating or additives, the body adjusting to the new supplement, and the quality of the supplement itself. Therefore, if you're feeling sick after taking vitamin D3, it's important to consult with a healthcare professional. They can help determine the cause and suggest the best course of action. Remember, even though vitamin D3 is essential for our health, it's always crucial to take it responsibly and in recommended doses. I decided to actually stand in the sun and get some actual sunlight instead of taking pills. Have you ever pondered on how much of the vitamins we consume are actually absorbed by our bodies? It's a fascinating topic, and today we're diving into the intricate process of vitamin digestion and absorption. First off, it's essential to understand that not all vitamins are created equal. They are categorized into two groups, water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble vitamins, which include vitamin C and the B vitamins, are absorbed directly into the bloodstream during digestion. The fat-soluble vitamins, such as vitamins A, D, E and K, require a little more work. They need to be accompanied by fat to be properly absorbed. So how does this process work? 
The journey of vitamins starts in the stomach where they are broken down with the food we eat. Once they reach the small intestine, the real magic happens. Here, the vitamins are absorbed into the bloodstream. Water-soluble vitamins are readily absorbed while fat-soluble vitamins hitch a ride with lipids, fats, to get absorbed. But here's the catch. The absorption rate isn't 100%. It varies depending on various factors such as the type of vitamin, the individual's age, overall health, and even the time of day. Some people say that you only get 25% of vitamins from vitamins, which means they're ineffective. For water-soluble vitamins, our bodies take what they need and excrete the rest. This is why we need a daily intake of these vitamins. For fat-soluble vitamins, our bodies store any excess in the liver and fatty tissues for future use. Now, you may be wondering, just how much of these vitamins do we actually absorb? On average, healthy individuals absorb around 50 to 90% of vitamins. But remember, this is a ballpark figure. Each person's absorption rate can differ based on their unique body chemistry and the quality of their diet. In conclusion, the absorption of vitamins is a complex process influenced by various factors. While our bodies are designed to absorb these essential nutrients efficiently, the actual percentage absorbed can vary. An understanding of this process can help us make better dietary choices and ensure our bodies get the nutrients they need. So next time you take your vitamins, remember this journey they undertake, from the plate through your digestive system and right into your cells. It's a fascinating journey that underscores the marvel that is the human body. Why would they recommend a pill instead of fruits and vegetables and sunlight? Ever wondered why vitamins make your skin itch? It's a question that's puzzled many, and today, we delve into the science behind it. Vitamins are essential for our overall health, supporting various functions in our bodies. But sometimes, these little helpers can cause an unexpected side effect, skin itchiness. You might be asking, why? Well, it's all about your body's response to these substances. When you ingest a vitamin, your immune system can sometimes mistake it for a foreign substance. This is particularly true for synthetic vitamins, which may not be identical. Synthetic, fake or man-made. And many of us are getting these fake pills. To the ones naturally found in our bodies. This confusion triggers an immune response, leading to inflammation and hence the itchiness. But there's more to it. Some vitamins like B3, also known as niacin, can cause a phenomenon known as flushing. This happens when niacin dilates the blood vessels in your skin, causing a rush of blood that results in redness and itching. Then there are allergic reactions. Yes, you heard it right. Some people can be allergic to certain vitamins, especially when taken in large doses. This allergy can manifest in various ways, including skin itchiness. But don't let this scare you away from vitamins. These reactions are relatively rare and often happen when vitamins are taken in excess or when synthetic versions are used. Most people can safely consume vitamins, especially when they come from natural food sources. To wrap up, vitamins can cause skin itchiness due to immune responses, flushing from niacin or allergic reactions. But remember, these reactions are rare and often linked to overconsumption or synthetic vitamins. So keep your vitamin intake in check and choose natural sources when possible. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the intriguing world of vitamins and our body's reactions to them. Stay curious and keep questioning. Until next time.